Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, for coming today. We're excited about the start of our season. I think that uh, everybody who kind of follows college basketball realizes it's a big week uh, all around the country that uh, teams get started practice. It's it's interesting how uh, a year or two ago they changed. Well, October 15th has always kind of been a magical date uh, for the start of practice. And um, a couple years ago they, they changed the formula that you can – start 42 days before your first scheduled game and in that 42 days you can practice 30 times and so uh, that leaves uh, for most most teams Friday the, the opening date for us we're going to start on Monday because of conference weekend and so we've got another week of some individual um, uh, workouts and uh, then we'll get started on Monday um, we're I am, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just really excited about this team. I think some years uh, you're a little more apprehensive. This year with the chance of us being able to travel and kind of coach our team a little bit in August, that uh, I think we have a, a good feel for uh, the group and, and what we need to do and how we can do it. I, uh, I'm really excited about uh, um, you know, just the, the depth of this team and, and hopefully it, that's how it it plays out. I love competition. I think competition is the key to success. And if our team can compete against each other, I think that uh, um, you know we'll find a real solid group that uh, um, you know can compete for championships. I I think that uh, this it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a year, four or five years ago when we were trying to replace Jimmer uh, as far as scoring is concerned. I mean Tyler was such a consistent score for us. I think that the way we'll do this is kind of similar to that year where uh, we'll have a lot of guys that will share uh, that role. I think uh, coming back from Spain in the four games that we played, we have four players that averaged uh, double figures, and I think this team is capable of having maybe five or six that could uh, score in double figures depending on how uh, the rotations work. So um, look forward to uh, – to Monday. I think that's uh, the start, and then we just kind of go day to day from there. So, uh, with that, I'll, I'll take any questions. Dave, could you give us a little more detail on what happened in Spain and what things that you liked that you saw specifically? Okay, uh, how much detail do you want? Uh, Madrid's amazing city. We we had uh, we were there for a day, and then we went and had practice that night when we uh, that, that we arrived. And uh, Travis Hansen was actually on the trip with us, and, and Travis had connections and uh, uh, to, to get us a, a gym, which is is really usually on those foreign trips. It's really hard to do anything except get to your hotel and then try to find where you're playing. But with Steve Trumbo, who was a former player on the trip with us. We, we actually really kind of knew our way around and we had connections with people. So uh, we got to practice that first night and then the first game in Madrid uh, was, uh, it was quite interesting. Guys getting used to uh, the, kind of the European feel. The floors are a little bit different. We played two games before we got to a wood floor. So th that was a, a little bit of a, a change for the guys. But I think that uh, the, um, the feel, the real feel of those games was they were close early and, you know, the European game is, is really kind of more of a half-court kind of game and we, we really try to push the tempo and we turn the ball over a lot in, in traveling, trying to push the tempo and, and had a hard time figuring out to get the ball down before we, we put our, you know, uh, took our next step. and. Uh, but I th what I was kind of pleased with is that uh, our, our tempo kind of, uh, I think we're up behind twice at halftime, and I think that we were uh, actually, you know, won each game kind of going away. So I think that our style did have kind of a positive effect on us and a negative effect on them. So that's a, a good thing. I, I like the guys are just trying to figure out themselves and each other and how they fit. I think we had great leadership from uh, Kyle and from Chase. And so uh, Madrid was good. It, 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 was, it was pretty challenging. And then, uh, and then we, the, the next day we traveled. We took, a, we, we took the day and we drove about three hours 
and stopped and had a pregame meal and then drove another hour and then played a game. And I haven't done that since junior college. <laughs> That's been a while. And uh, we played at a 5 o'clock game, and it was about 95 degrees outside and hotter than that inside, that's for sure. But, uh, and they, they, gave us a great, they gave us a good game, and then we got them late. You know, we were able to put, kind of put the game away. So then we had a couple of days off, and then we played back-to-back -back games in Barcelona. Coach, could you address the health of your team, particularly you know, Nate and Jamal and Nick, how they're doing? You know, that, that was really uh, interesting for us in the 10 days that we practiced. Uh, Nate was able to go through every practice, which was good, uh, and he feels good, and he actually, we didn't know how we would play him in the games. When we got to schedule and realized that we were going to play two back-to-back -back games, uh, it kind of changed the uh, kind of the amount of guys that we were going to take on the trip just simply because I didn't know what would happen with Jamal and Nate in the back-to-back -back games. So, uh, but Nate was able to play all five games and, and uh, played great minutes and rebounded the ball really well, scored the ball really well in, in one game, which reminded me kind of when he was in his uh, his freshman sophomore year. So, um, and Jamal played the the first game and the last game. Uh, it was really effective in the first game. The last game, not quite so much. Uh, never really got in a rhythm, got into some foul trouble. But it was good to see Jamal in the practices and uh, really look forward to, to getting him some consistent uh, time on the floor with this group to see how he can really fit in. At which spots do you feel most locked in with right now, and where do you expect the most competition here in the September, October? Well, I think when you take you know, guys who have started for you, that uh, you, you know, their experience, so the experienced guys, um, you're talking about Kyle <coughs> and Chase and Nate and then uh, Corbin Kafusi. And Corbin started, I think, the last 15 or 16 games for us last year. And Corbin had a great, uh, you know, a great four games over there for us, led us in rebounding. And, uh, his issue, he, he's a really aggressive player, and he'll have to, to play major minutes, figure out how to stay out of foul trouble because he is so aggressive. But that's, that, that's a good way to start. Uh, and so I think that those those four experienced players, but after that, it's it's a lot of really talented guys that are inexperienced, and so that's where the competition will be. Coach, you referenced the 2011-2012 team as a team that's kind of, I guess, similar to what this squad's going to be experiencing. Who do you expect to step up in that scoring absence this year? Well, I expect them all to step up. We'll see. Uh, that, that, that's the beauty of Monday is that you get a chance to get on that path to start. I think that uh, – you know, if you, if you take from our, the practices that we've had and the time in Spain, uh, you, you'd obviously look to the guys who kind of produced there. Uh, Nick Emery is a, was a really good scorer for us. Kyle Davis scored the ball really well for us. Chase was our leading scorer. Uh, and then I think that uh, you know, it, was, uh, it was Kyle and Chase and two Kyles and, and Nick that averaged in double figures. And then Jordan Chapman, you know, had uh, – Nice scoring days there, so it, it'll be it'll be really interesting to me to see uh, who kind of rises rises up. I thought that uh, you know so, you know some of the the younger guys, Zach Celius, you know coming coming right out of high school, it was interesting to watch that adjustment and hopefully uh, with that experience, it'll help him uh, in the next three or four or five weeks before we get started uh, because he has a baseline now to kind of compare things to and. Can, can go from there. And then, you know, Corey Calvert got up, he twisted his ankle in the first game over there, and he's really, really had a hard time recovering from, from it. And he hasn't really been able to go in a full workout since then. And so hopefully uh, he's close to getting back with us and can start with us on Monday. Coach, have you ever had a roster like this one where you have nine players, new faces that didn't play, play last season? Um, how unique of a challenge is that for you? Well, I, I think that uh, one thing that we've been able to do in the 10 seasons is to be able to return a core group that can help the, the younger and experienced guys understand not only our system, but how we practice, what we do, kind of our culture, and then the expectations that we have from our, ourselves. And uh, I, I think with Nate and, uh, and Corb and Chase and, and, uh, and Kyle that uh, – there's 
there's pretty good communication to this group about what our expectations are and and uh, what our culture is, and so I feel really comfortable with that. Having a player like Cooper with his background and, and upbringing, what, what kind of production are you guys expecting out of Cooper this season? Well, I think that Coop's in, we, and we've talked about this a lot with this certain group of guys, that there's a, um, you know, there's a, a, a lot of uh, uncertainty as far as the rotation's concerned. And, uh, you know, Cooper is a guy who I think his natural position is to play the point guard position, but he's a, a pretty good scorer, but he, he's a really tough player. And he understands uh, team plays, and he understands uh, consistency. He's battled through quite a few kind of injuries from uh, a return missionary's uh, point of view, but uh, he's there every day, and he's, uh, he's involved. And so he, he's, he's a tough kid, and we look forward to seeing what he can do for us. Dave, we've talked a lot about scoring, but one of the knocks has been at times the defensive performance of your guys. Where, where do you view them being at defensively heading into this season? I was, I was really pleased with uh, our improvement defensively. I think that personnel, uh, just personnel adjustments will, will help us defensively. I mean, last year when we, last couple of years, we just had a, a hard time with the depth of our front line. And so we're playing smaller guys and, and it's, it's hard to guard us, but it's hard to guard other guys, you know? And so uh, uh, you, know, you re replace, virtually replace Nate, 6'11", his defensive presence and his rebounding presence, and we replaced him with 5'10", Skylar Halford and 6'2", Anson Winder. And it helped us offensively, but it did cause some issues defensively and rebounding. And that's why Kyle was such a huge part of our team last year, rebounding the ball. We had to have him have big, big games rebounding the ball. So uh, I believe with the, uh, with the size, the strength, and the depth of our front line, if we can get to that, I, I thought last year we would get to that. I thought we'd have Jamal and Nate on the team last year, and neither one of them played. So we're hoping we get them both this year, along with Kyle Davis and Corb and Jacob Hardsock and Braden Shaw. And if that group is good, as good as I think it'll be, our depth on that front line will be way better, and it'll, it'll show uh, it'll show on the defensive end. Dave, you brought in a, a new assistant coach in Quincy Lewis. How has he fit in, and, and how has that made adjustments in your coaching staff as far as responsibilities? I, I, I'm really pleased with Quincy. I think that he is a um, – you know he's a really he's a very good coach, really smart guy. But what I love most about Quince is he's he's loves competition. He played for me when I was the my very first year as a head coach in college at, at Dixie, and uh, was our starting point guard. And he he's a competitor, and that's kind of what he preaches as a as a coach, and what he preaches to the players. And I think that that's kind of the whole theme of this year's group is. Um, Hopefully that will we'll be, it'll be really competitive practices, competitive, uh, you know, for, for spots, for playing time, and, uh, and obviously competitive when it's game time. So uh, I think for this year it'll be, uh, a, you know, kind of a learning curve for Quincy, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll use him in, in so many different ways. But the one thing about uh, – about Quincy, when he, when when you know we talked in the process that he's he said I've done everything as far as a college coach, a high school coach, a head coach, made all the adjustments in games, has done everything, and it says whatever you need me to do, that's what we'll do. And uh, so I think that the the practices in August and the and the trip to Spain really helped us kind of uh, determine that and and just look forward to uh, kind of getting him in the mix and get going. Will, will Terry still handle the offense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll stay that way, and and, and but with with a lot of input, I, I think you'll you'll probably see uh, a lot more of of crossing the lines. It won't be so uh, won't be an offensive guy, a defensive guy. I know that uh, you know uh, Coach Lacombe will be a lot more involved uh, yeah, with uh, our defensive game planning and preparation, and uh, but Quincy and and, and, and Coach Lacombe they'll they'll, they'll handle. Um, our defensive game prep, and, uh, and Terry will help with the offense. Past few years, Coach, you, you've signed some nationally heralded recruiting classes, and now you're starting to see those players trickle into the program. Do you feel that this is the beginning of a special era or phase of, of this program? Yeah, I've I've been taught some patience here. I think I'm waiting for these guys to come, and excited to get them here. I'm really excited to get you know Nick uh, Emery was one of the 
you know, the first top 100 guys we've we signed after Kyle and uh, uh, Tyler. So uh, we look forward to to Nick this year and then TJ and then, you know, Peyton Dastrup and Eric Mika coming back. So uh, that's that's still down the road. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what, what this group can do. And then, then you know, when Chase and, and, and Kyle and Nate leave, you know, what will be here when they come back? And uh, that's kind of been, you know, I, I, it was really important to me that when I got this job 10 years ago that we didn't just have good teams, but we had a great program and we could be consistent year after year and not just kind of plan for a big year that we could be consistent. We're, we're looking, still looking for that real big year and, and hopefully that uh, we've got it here in the future, yeah, near future. Dave, what led to your decision to bring Alan Hampson into the program and what are your expectations for Well, Alan, he, uh, once he was accepted to school, into, into school, his parents came and asked me if uh, there'd be an opportunity for him to, uh, um, you know, just to, to, to work out with the guys and see. And, and his mission timetable was so difficult, he didn't get back till like August 28th or so. Uh, and so he still hasn't been cleared to actually work out. We're still in the initial processes of, of getting him uh, through, you know, kind of his, his mission conditioning. Uh, process and uh, you know, he's seven three and he's got a seven six wingspan and uh, you know I remember in high school as a pretty pretty good player that that had a pretty good feel uh, and he's had some you know corrective surgery and and got himself in a, a much better his body in a much better uh, position to be able to compete and we'll see how that works over the course of a you know a week practice and then two week practice and then see how we go from there. Coach, so there go those guys are hard to find. That's what led to the decision. Coach Corbin Kafusi seemed like he had a he, he started out the year a little bit raw, but he's progressed exponentially throughout last season. What have you seen from him in the off season going into the season that gives you hope that he can continue that climb? Well, I, I think the the most impressive thing with Corbin is how hard he works. He's an everyday guy, and and he really wants to improve his game to help our team. And that's a great quality to have. A lot of guys have all kinds of agendas of why they want to get better. Corb's agenda is pretty simple. He wants, he, he loves to win. He's a competitor. And uh, he, he's, he's an everyday guy. I, I love the, the time that he spends with our coaches. And, and then the time he comes in and watches film. And, and uh, I, I think that, um, you know, we're trying to get, get Corb from, from being kind of a highlight guy. He, he, He's capable of because he's so athletic and he's got such great size that he can uh, he can affect the game on both ends of the floor. But uh, the consistent play from end to end, day after day, night after night, is you know where hopefully we'll see the real improvement in court. Yeah. Year five uh, in the West Coast Conference. Do you feel like you have a better feel now of, of this league and the the venues and personnel? <laughs> Well, what I do know is that it's a really competitive league and that we won four out of five uh, championships um, in the Mount West Conference and we're 0 for 4 in this league. And uh, so the, the, the challenge is uh, obviously uh, really good and we're looking forward to uh, you know, trying to, uh, to break through here and win a regular season title and win a conference title, conference tournament title. And, and then make a, a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Hopefully that happens soon.